Hi guys. So, a lot of people have been talking about irony lately. And I would like to point out some irony. Myself. So, this is from the book of John, chapter 13. And when Jesus is saying... A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this all men know, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Now, John wrote the Gospel of John, he wrote the Epistles of John, and he wrote Revelation, and he actually wrote um, the Gospel of John after he wrote Revelation. But he... You know, he had already heard and was aware of all, you know, the the mysteries revealed through Paul to about the church and the indwelling Holy Spirit and all of those things. Um, and if you want to know how these terms are defined in the Gospel of John, you read John's other books and you see he defines and explains these terms. And this is not the same commandment that's in the Ten Commandments. By the words, by Jesus' own words, a new commandment I give unto you. And then John explains what that commandment is and what it means in, for, in the book of 1 John. And if, if you haven't heard it, if you go to my playlist, I just did a whole teaching on the chapter of 1 John. And it's not about fruit inspecting to determine whether or not someone is saved. The love he is speaking of is the love that is true in you because you are a believer. It comes with believing the gospel. It's the love that is the acceptance into the beloved of the brethren by acknowledging them as your brother or sister based on Jesus Christ. That's the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace based on the gospel of Jesus Christ that we are all saved by. Okay, so when someone has put their faith in Jesus Christ, they have believed the gospel and the Jesus according and Jesus according to the scriptures. They believe the record God has given of His Son. They are saved, regardless of any poor behavior, regardless of sin that they might be struggling with. If you look at someone's behavior. And, or their sin, and they tell you that they are a believer in Jesus Christ, they have that profession of faith. They speak the correct gospel, they speak the correct Jesus of the Bible, and they have professed faith in Christ. And you say to them, well, I'm afraid I, I can't believe that you sa you're saved, or I doubt that you're actually saved, and my brother or sister, simply because you don't like their behavior, that proves you don't believe the gospel. It's a sin that you cannot commit because when you believe the gospel, you acknowledge the truth of the gospel in others who believe also. Otherwise, you are a fruit inspector, a sin inspector, who does not believe that the, that the blood of Jesus Christ covers all sin and that faith is the only requirement to be saved. You are teaching a false, a false gospel. You are believing a false gospel. You are going the way of Cain. First John teaches about those that go the way of Cain. Okay, They hate or despise their brother's sacrifice that is acceptable to God, which is just Jesus Christ. They have put their faith and trust in that instead of their own works. They're not looking at their behavior to determine their salvation, and they're not looking at others' behavior to determine their salvation. Again, when Jesus addressed, when he talked about, you'll know them by, your, by their fruits, he's speaking of the words of their mouth, their profession, okay? If they're teaching falsely about Jesus or the gospel, you know, then you're like, oh, well, wait, they must not believe the gospel. They don't profess to believe the correct gospel or Jesus of the Bible, you know? Um, and cause Jesus goes right before he says that he tells them to, you know, before that he's telling them not to judge based on outer appearance and behavior. It's the whole point that a wolf 
in sheep's clothing looks like a sheep. What's different about them? They make a different sound. It's what comes out of their mouth. Okay. Um, they're going to outwardly appear to be a sheep. So you can't judge outwardly. We don't know. Paul says we don't know Jesus or each other according to the flesh. We know each other according to the spirit. And we are all capable of being sinful, getting in our flesh, being angry, messing up, saying awful things we shouldn't have said. That doesn't mean we're not a believer, okay? And the irony I wanted to point out to you is that people are saying, we'll know, you know, you'll know them by our love. And they're using that to fruit inspect brothers and sisters in Christ and say they're not saved, suggest they are not saved based on their fruit. Jesus wasn't talking about, and he was clear, you've got to read things in context. He wasn't talking about the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit fruit. You can't judge based on that because a believer can walk according to the flesh or the spirit. They can be a carnal Christian or not a Christian. And maybe they're, maybe most of the time they walk according to the spirit, but they're having a bad day and they messed up, you know, whatever. Uh, you can't throw the first stone unless you are without sin. And we got a lot of stone throwers here that are judging people's salvation. And the irony of it is they're using this verse and it's turning and pointing right back at them. Because they don't love, they're not loving the brethren. They're not acknowledging a brother or sister according to their profession. They're picking at behavior. They don't like what somebody said. And they think it's ugly. So now they're questioning their behavior. Or they're saying they're not a good teacher. Or, uh, well, I can't listen to that person because sometimes they're kind of mean and that offends me. Well, are they teaching rightly? So you're going to go listen to somebody that's nice, but they're slipping all kinds of leaven in there and all kinds of error and a false gospel and they're double fork tongued liars. Another thing, uh, some of these people have been so ugly in their accusations. So they're complete hypocrites. Because somebody says one thing that's a little off and all of a sudden, whoa, they're all up in arms. Well, they're doing it too. You know, throw the first stone. It's just ugly, guys. If you believe the gospel you are my brother or sister i acknowledge you and i accept you as my brother or sister there are some better off loved from afar because they are causing much much harm they're walking very carnally according to the flesh And wanting to stir up problems. But that's different. That's still loving according to scripture, even if sometimes you've got to mark and avoid for a little while. But that's different than pointing the finger at somebody's sin and saying, you are not saved. You are a wolf based on your behavior. So I just wanted to point that out and I say, let's be careful, guys. We do need to be careful about what we post, you know, what we say and how we represent Jesus Christ and the body of Christ. You know, as so not to offend people. Um, but let's keep in mind and understand that there is no premise for fruit inspecting the way that many Christians think there is in the Bible. That's from That comes from cherry-picking scripture. It comes from religiosity and self-righteousness. I know nobody here wants to be fruit inspected. If any of you think you can pass a fruit inspection, you're really proud. <laughs> Because we all mess up sometimes, guys. And it, yeah, we just can't be doing each other that way. All right. I love you guys. Be blessed.